Welcome to Tips and Tricks for Using Arc Objects in Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 and 2010. In this presentation, I'll discuss templates, snippets, F1 help, highlighting of objects, references and using statements, and samples. I'll be using Visual Studio 2010 for the demonstration, but anything that is specific to Arc Objects can also be used in Visual Studio 2008. I'll point out any tips or tricks that are specific to just Visual Studio 2010 as we go along. Additionally, I'll be creating an add-in, which is new at ArcGIS 10, but many of the Visual Studio integration features discussed here are also applicable to building custom components in ArcGIS versions prior to 10. Templates are the number one starting point for working with ARC objects. ESRI provided templates are available in Visual Studio when you go to create a new project. Under the installed templates, select the language of your choice, select ArcGIS, and then select whether you are creating an add-in or other type of project to extend ArcGIS Desktop. Here I am using Visual Studio 2010, so it's important to note that Visual Studio 2010 defaults to the .NET Framework 4. The ESRI templates target .NET Framework 3.5, so be sure to set your target framework correctly or the templates will not appear. I'll select to create an ArcMap add-in, type in a name, and then click OK. Immediately, the ArcGIS add-in wizard appears and guides me through creating my add-in. I can specify the name of the add-in, the company, the author, a description, and an image if I choose. For now, I'm going to leave the defaults and click Next. On the second page of the wizard, I have the option to create any or all of the custom extensibility points listed, such as the button, tool, or dockable window. I'll choose to create a button, leave the rest of the defaults, and click Finish. Now that we're in Visual Studio, my goal is to show you some of the integrated features that help you program with Arc Objects more efficiently. The button add-in template has already saved us quite a bit of time, as it's added the basic framework code as well as many of the ArcGIS references we need. Let's say I have an idea of what I'd like to do, but I don't quite remember the code off the top of my head. In the text editor, right-click and choose Insert Snippet. This brings up the standard Microsoft Snippet menu. I can navigate to Arc Objects, but from there I'm not really sure about the location of my desired snippet. So another option is to go back, right-click again, and then click ArcGIS Snippet Finder. This brings up the Snippet Finder dialog, which allows you to search based on keywords. I'm going to search for a snippet to add a graphic to map. I see that there are two snippets that meet my criteria, Add Graphic to Map and Add Graphic Layer to Globe. I can scan through the text of the snippet just to make sure that it's what I need. Then I can click Insert Code, and it'll insert the code for me here in my project. Now that we've added our code, it would be really nice to clean this up a bit and have it align with the rest of the code. In Visual Studio, this command is Control K D. So this is our snippet to add a graphic to the map. Notice the snippet is enclosed in region statements so that you can quickly minimize that section of code. Also notice that by adding in a snippet via the Snippet Finder, we've automatically added in the ESRI references we need as well as added the using statements at the top. Now, if the Snippet Finder functionality had not added in the references we need, we would have a few basic options for adding a reference. The first is to right-click on the references and select Add Reference. This is fine, except it loads all the references you could possibly add, and it won't actually let you sort the list until everything has loaded. The second option is to right-click on References and select Add ArcGIS Reference. 
This is nice because it only loads ArcGIS references into your list, so it's faster and easier to pick out the reference you need. Additionally, one new requirement for ArcGIS 10 is that the specific version property of ESRI references must be set to false. If you add a reference via the standard Microsoft Dialog, it defaults the specific version to true. If you add a reference via the Add ArcGIS reference, it will set the specific version to false for you. So now let's just say that for some reason we were missing a using statement that we needed. I'm going to delete the geometry using statement here. In Visual Studio 2010, Microsoft has included a feature called the Smart Tag. All I have to do is place my cursor on the object in question and the smart tag appears. When I click the smart tag, it gives me several options, including adding a using statement or fully qualifying the object directly in the code. I'm going to have Visual Studio add the using statement for me. Another feature specific to Visual Studio 2010 is highlighting. If I place my cursor on an object in the code, it will highlight all the places in the text editor where that same object occurs. For example, the ESRI geometry type. This makes it easy to skim over my code and see where I've used that object. Now, I've added a snippet provided by ESRI, but I'd like to point out that we do not have to use it exactly as is. We can modify this snippet to do anything we like. The snippet just gives us a good starting point. If we do end up modifying this code and decide it would be useful in the future, we can select the code, right click, and select ArcGIS Snippet Editor Wizard. When the dialog appears, we can do any final editing necessary and then click Next. On the second page, we enter a title and a description and click Next. The third page allows us to specify the references needed, such as ESRI ArcGIS Cardo, Display, and maybe even System. We click Next, and the final page allows us to specify any extensions, and then the products such as ArcView, ArcEditor, or ArcInfo, and the version to which this snippet applies. Click Finish, and then the snippet is now saved in our local directory. If we right click and go to ArcGIS Snippet Finder, change the drop down menu here to be our local snippet folder, and then we can search and we'll find our add graphic edited snippet right there in the Snippet Finder. Now let's say I'd like to learn a bit more about the objects used in this snippet. If I place my cursor over a specific object, you'll see a small dialog appear with the name of the interface, class, property, or method, and a short description. To pull up the help and see additional information, press the F1 key. This is referred to as F1 Help or Integrated Visual Studio Help. In both Visual Studio 2008 and 2010, the Arc Objects Integrated Help is installed when you install your SDK. For Visual Studio 2010, the help displays in your default web browser. Here I have the help for iMarker Element, so I can view information about the interface members and classes, but I'll also find links to applicable .NET snippets, samples, and any related topics contained in the help. The final tip I'd like to discuss here are samples. As part of your Arc Objects SDK, we have included over 200 samples to help guide you in your development. All samples are available in both c -sharp and VB.net and for both Visual Studio 2008 and 2010. The samples are installed to your Developer Kit install directory, but you can also access the code via the help. For example, here on the iMarker Element help page, we have a listing of .NET samples. If you click one of the samples, you'll receive the help page for that sample along with additional information and a view code link. If you click the View Code link, this gives you an easy access to simply copy and paste any code that you need directly into your own project. This avoids the need to open up the actual sample project if you're just looking for a small piece of code. That concludes this presentation on tips and tricks for using Arc Objects in Visual Studio. Please see the developer help for additional information on programming with Arc Objects.